Now, that's a bit weird because why would a query need undo? Queries and undo. Now, that's a bit weird because why would a query need undo? And if you've come to my read consistency talks, you'll know why, but we're gonna fly through a little bit of revision. Our current production query is unstable. Normally it runs for 10 minutes, but sometimes it runs over hours. I want to know if the slow query was reading undo. Is there a dynamic view available for this information? Yes, there is, but not directly. So let's talk briefly about read consistency. And most of us are familiar with this. If session one starts a query at nine o'clock, and that query is going to run for several minutes, we don't stop session two coming along and changing the data as it was uh, for that running query. Other systems take read locks, we don't. The, the best thing about Oracle is readers don't block writers, writers don't block readers. So at five past nine, when session one stumbles across this same block that's already been modified by another session, it has to work out how to take that block back to nine o'clock to give you a read consistent view and time obviously a system change number and that's how we do it we use the undo information based on the transactions undo the block that's scn003 looks like the, the employee name of john session two comes along they change it from john to sue which gets you a brand new scn and obviously because it's a transaction we record undo for that transaction because for all we know that session may want to roll back but we can see they've done a commit Session one comes along, says, I need block 3217, as it was at 9 a.m. In this case, that's SCN 192, block 234. Block SCN 234 is way too new, so we take a copy in the buffer cache, and then we go locate the other sessions undo and roll back that transaction. That brings it back to SCN 003 and an employee name of John, and that's good enough for us because SCN 003 is earlier than SCN 192. Obviously, I've done that pretty quickly, but we've spoken about read consistency on other sessions. But it could be a lot worse than that. That's like your best case scenario. What might happen is you might request block at 192 and find that the SCN is 1345. No problems. I'll roll that back. Take a copy, roll it back. Oh, it's SCN 1195 now. Roll that one back. Oh, it's 1104. Oh, roll that one back. It's 768. Roll that back. It's 356. And so forth, and so forth, and so forth. And finally, we get it back to 185, which is good enough for our query for SCN at 192. Accessing one block might need to do a lot of undo because a lot of changes have occurred to it since you requested that query. How can we detect this? Let's do a little demo. So I'm going to create a table as a copy of DBA objects, put an index on the object ID column, which is pretty much its primary key. And just to show the undo op operations in action here, I'm going to open a cursor here using that index, querying all the rows in the table. It's about 70,000 rows, if memory serves. That cursor has been opened when the table has 70,000 rows. Now I'm going to delete all those rows in a single transaction. All those rows have been deleted, 72,000 of them, and committed. So they're gone. In my session, you look, you have these stats, and they all are suffixed with undo records applied. And these are where you want to be looking to see what's going on in terms of undo. They're all currently set to almost zero. Now I've set feedback to only, which means I am actually running a query, but I'm not showing the output. I'm printing out that ref cursor that I opened before I did the delete. So it needs to return to me these 72,000 rows. And it was doing index lookup. So it's literally getting each row at a time and every single row goes, ah, your SCN's no good to me, I need to roll it back. So now I go look at my transaction tables and my data blocks and rollback changes. You can see I did 72,000 undos. 72,000 rows, each one was, I encountered it, it's gone, it's been deleted. What it really is, is the SCN is too new, I need to roll back that row. So for 72,000 rows, 72,000 undos. That's example one of how you can detect when you had to do a lot of undo work. 
Now, it doesn't have to be some big table that has 70,000 rows and I deleted them all. It's not a matter of the volume of changes. It's more of a question of, sorry, I should say the, the volume of change. It's more a question of the frequency of transactions. They can be one and the same thing. Here's an equivalent table now. I've dropped that table and I create a brand new table, which is just one row. It's a one row from Joule. I'll open up a ref cursor again on that one row. Now I'm just doing 25,000 transactions on that one row. So it doesn't have to be a big table, but I've now got 25,000 commits on that one row. And the ref cursor was opened up before any of those. New session, my under records applied as zero. I print out just one row. That's all it was. And look at that 25,000 under records applied because I undid the first update. Oh, it's still to new. Undid the second update, undid the third. Had to undo 25,000 updates to get back to an SCN that was good enough for when that ref cursor was open. So it could be one transaction, huge amount of change. It could be lots of transactions, little amount of change in each or anything in between. It's really a question of how much work is it to get back to the SCN number I need to give a read consistent query. Just by way of interest is this is one of the reasons where sometimes a full table scan can actually give you a little bit of benefit. Here's my table T. Once again, it's the 72,000 rows of DBA objects. Open up a brand new cursor. There's no index on the table this time. Delete all the rows, we'll commit that transaction, flush out the buffer cache so we can't cheat or anything. And now, my stats start off as zero, it's a brand new session. I print out my ref cursor, it's just doing a full table scan. So 72,000 rows before they got deleted, I've still come back. But now I didn't do 72,000 undo records applied, I only did 1400 undo records applied. And that's roughly the same size as the table. In this case, because I'm doing multi-block reads, I'm basically grabbing a block and undoing the block and therefore discovering that, ah, oh, that actually fixed all the subsequent rows in that block before I moved on to the next one. So sometimes uh, full table scans can actually get a bit better because they are less uh, or they are more immune to being smashed by undo information. So as I said, it's not really the, the volume of the table that matters, it's the volume of change. You might change a small table lots of times, you might change a big table just once. Either way, that's when you're gonna start seeing the amount of undo having to be worked through to give you read consistent queries. And as we saw the stats you want to be looking at are the undo records applied suffix stats. Obviously query duration is a big factor here. If a query runs for four hours, there is a very high chance that it may stumble across a block that needs to be wound back four hours worth. Now that might be one transaction, it could be a billion, but obviously the longer a query runs, the more work the potential is there, especially if that's a high frequency time. If you're running a lot of stuff during that time, then the odds are queries running for that long will have to undo a lot of work. So be aware of that. It's important to realize that all those common things we used to talk about in the, in the days before our databases were 24 seven in terms of try run your batch in a quiet time, try run your long running queries outside your big batch updates, et cetera, are all still valid today. As DBAs, we're under more and more pressure because the systems are busy all the time, but these are things to be aware of. Uh, keep an eye on those undo records applied stats and see if you can shift things around to try avoid uh, getting punished on the read consistency. Thank you.